in Los Angeles, there's a blessing of opportunities to follow your dreams and be who you want to be. In the path of discovering, we are challenged with ideas of what we are to become and what we should do to be accepted and to thrive in this society. While some deny and ignore that most of the people here in America are immigrants, the majority of immigrants that are here is because America disrupted their land. Some were forced to leave their country because of war. While their land and resources are being sold to big corporation companies. Some were born in LA because their parents and families migrated to survive. And some were lucky enough to cross the border or arrive fresh from the boat to start a new life. We are dreamers. We are dreamers. We want to find our life's purpose. We want to express our unique creative genius. And we are happy to share sincerity with our passions. But no matter who we are and how far we have come, there's questions that still whispers inside our being. Who, who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Where did we come from? Where did we came Where did from? We come from? Where did we come from? How was it like How was where it we like came from? What was it like where we came from? Identity. Identity, which usually gets sacrificed to thrive and be accepted. Our, our culture, culture. Our, our history. history. Our, our stories. This is a story about five dreamers that had an opportunity to go back to their motherland. To connect with their roots and to discover their ancestors. Will our roots take hold? Will the soil remember? In April of 2018, a week before departing on our trip, we held a screening for the documentary, Revitalizing the Dwindling Mumbaki. It was a chance for us to gather with community. To receive their guidance and to receive their blessing. I feel immense gratitude um, for this evening and to um, receive the blessings of our family and friends. I was just really surprised at the turnout and how everyone was very supportive and we feel that our work that we're doing is really important. I feel blessed that we had the successful screening. All our close friends and family were able to come. Now the screening is done. We're going to the next mission now. Um, we're about to leave to the Philippines three days from now. So we got to pack, we got to plan, and we got to just um, start to really visualize and carry out those visualizations. Going to the Philippines, uh, I don't really know what to fully expect. You know, I could be as much ready as I can, but like there's so many, you know, things that could happen. <laughs> it's not my first time in the Philippines. Um, it's going to be the first time that it's on my own terms. I feel like this is right. I feel um, that like everything is aligned for all of us to be together. <laughs> Before we go to the Philippines, first things first.
Philippines, a name not even of our own, named after the conquistador King Philip. Over 7,000 islands full of minerals and resources, yet thousands still starving. Deforestation. Cities crowded of commercialized businesses and billboards. Diesel fuel smells. Sticky heat. The number one export product, our own people. We are the third world. We've been uprooted. We are taught to obey, respect, and honor our elders. But what about our elders from before the Spanish arrived? Before our last names got changed, were their practices genuine? Did their prayers go unheard? All these things covering something far from what we naturally are. What have we become? Now is the time for facing the truth that colonization took a toll. Colonization has, has, has taken some of the soul of, of our people and it's time to really, first of all, acknowledge that there's been trauma that needs healing. Step two is how do you go about healing these traumas? A lot of cases, my ancestors and Many ancestors of this land, they had, their lives had been taken or traumas had been inflicted upon them that haven't been healed. So they need assistance in freeing themselves so, so that they can be at peace, right? Part of that is for them to communicate to their, their lineage, those that go after them, the generations after them, because that hurt gets passed down. I feel the the pain of those who have gone before me because if it doesn't heal and I, I'm a part of them through birth, we're all connected. No matter how heavy this reality is, we are determined to remember. Bahala na. We just arrived in Panawe. I haven't been to the Philippines in about uh, 12 years, since 2006. So for me, there was a lot going through my head about uh, what was awaiting me. I also just came from my family's ancestry in Bicol and Caramuan. My ancestral land. My body heals, connecting directly to the land and the water. For a long time, I've been walking a path to seek holistic healing. Quick reflection, seeing my family the past couple of days. It was really lovely, to say the least. Uh, I got to show my friends Tapalenque. My family made me a feast. They had a boodle fight. It was nice and I got to sit down with them and ask him some questions about a little bit of the history of my family living in J. De Leon. And I asked them also if there's any faith healers or abularyas or any shamans in our family. And of course, there wasn't any. I was able to see my cousins and my niece that I haven't seen in since I was seven. 
But most of it, I was looking at like, pictures on the walls, and I was seeing, you know, snapshots of their lives when they were little. I went to see my family, and it was amazing to be home. I appreciate the memories that remind me of what I've been through. I've been hearing my ancestors calling. It was important for me to visit my family and to understand more about my ancestors. I started to sense the differences between my dad's region in the north and my mom's region further south. It was also nice to see how they practice their spirituality and faith. Understanding when someone passes, the mourning process is very sacred. It's still sacred today. And so I had explained to them why I'm here on this trip. Because being born a Filipino-American, there's a real disconnect from myself and my home country. And so I came to search for different ways to connect with my roots. And I was able to get their blessing for my journey. So I'm really, really glad I got to talk to them and tell them why I'm here. So my dad was living in America for a few years before he came back to the Philippines to marry my mom. Their wedding was a celebration of their life together, but it was also a goodbye to the land that fed them, that clothed them. Ever since I was a kid, I had to deal with a lot of chronic health issues. So I've been through different spectrums to seek healing. Really grateful for all the work that my mom and dad had done to bring my brothers and I to America or to have this life that we have. And although I'm not sure if they quite fully understand why I'm doing this journey, I guess what matters most is that I know why I'm doing this journey and it's for myself. I'm so thankful with my family. Thank you for passing down the knowledge and history. Even though we have different beliefs about spirituality and faith, we can find ways to accept and understand each other. I feel like I'm just guided by my ancestors and just trusting this journey. There's no looking back. So I'm ready to let go of kind of what I thought this journey would be and, and let go of maybe the past stories that I told myself and just really be present and take in being in union with the land, with my kapwa, is, is something that I'm just looking forward to. My intentions are to go and just be open because when you're open and you trust and your prayers are strong, and you come in a good way, you come in reverence, you come in respect, the divine timing and the lessons that you need to learn become effortless. There's still work to be done, but when you, you're, you're, you show up, when you're present, then you go into a flow. So I'm looking to find that flow. Returning to my Bicol ancestors, I especially wanted to visit the grave of my Lolo, Growing up, I had a brief period in my life when he lived with us. He would make me chew raw ginger when I was sick, and I thought it was gross back then, or do spirit of the coin or glass, and I was really skeptic. At that time, I couldn't understand, but now where I'm at learning and unlearning, reaching deep into my roots, I see I recognize my Lola's practices were ancestral practices. And so to come to Bicol and Banawe, I now more than ever want to connect and return to these ancestral practices in my healing journey.
despite losing certain aspects of our culture. One tradition that continues to thrive is respect for elders. Fortunately for us, there's an abundance of elders that have helped pave the path that we can walk. Mamerto is a friend and a teacher, navigating his way in the diaspora, doing ancestral work. Recently, he returned home to Banawe. We were invited by Mamerto to participate in a vision quest for connecting with ancestors and nature with the help of the Ifogao people. Since it's just a four-day event, uh, I pick five uh, main rituals to use, and they also correspond with the four seasons. We saw a need. We heard a lot of people who are thirsty and feeling lost, and they were looking for themselves, their culture, their traditions, and the ways that were presented to them weren't working. I feel the same for other Filipinos in the diaspora. Um, like me, I'm already here and I have a hunger to remember my country's legacy, the gift, the genius of the Filipino. This is the answer to my intention, to increase the force of the people who envisions transformation, change of consciousness, and going back to the land, connecting back to the land. Yeah, I came here with an intention for connection and yeah, that's what I, I want to bring back, like connection to my roots, connection to people, connection to energy, to the divine, to everything, and put it into my work. There's been a calling for me to come back, to return. And then the works of the Filipinos in the U.S. inspired me or motivated me, pushed me to come back, to just return. I call this a journey of the soul because really it, it, it depends my connectivity to the original source of life, which is the Creator. I think just communing um, together, you know, all of us from all over the diaspora in the Philippines um, is healing in itself because oftentimes like this journey of healing um, is really isolating um, and solitude is always necessary, right, when we're trying to heal um, our own wounds and the traumas that we've inherited, you know, from our ancestors. So just physically gathering with others um, in a similar journey was very healing. I asked him what he think about Nani Fugao who are coming here to learn our culture and he said he's surprised because they look like they are well to do yet they like to come and learn our culture. Gusto kung you will stay with us in Ifugao so that you will learn more our culture, our tradition, and our roots, even our ancestry. Because in one day or two days, you cannot learn our customs and tradition. So stay longer with us and, uh, and teach you. If we do more events, it will really help. Because if they see Filipinos from other, you know, culture coming back here, especially people from the diaspora, they will start to question their path. You know, why are we following this when all these people who went to America, for example, are coming back to learn our culture? Then uh, I know they will start to ask questions and hopefully they will say, oh, they're learning how to beat the gong. And we don't know how to beat the gong. This is our culture.
then I thought of uh, sharing four important uh, inheritance that we got from our forefathers, namely the rice field that popular. The subsistence economy in Ifugao revolves around the production of rice in terraced paddies. It is highly dependent on water. The muyong is a major component of its production. It provides water and stability. The muyong system has been recognized internationally as an ideal forest management practice that is deeply ingrained in the culture of the Ifugao people. The details, um, the hard work, the single just grains of rice that makes up that abundance of, of love that we're able to eat. And a, and a deeper connection and appreciation for these things that we often take for granted. There are 14 rituals involved in rice production and if you add uh, nine more optional, there are actually 23 rituals according to our tradition. The Ifugao house design, which is unique to the Ifugaos. We were invited to sleep in traditional Ifugao belly huts. This geometric structure has been used in many cultures to connect with the heavens and the divine. It is constructed without nails so that it can easily be broken down, transported, and reassembled again. This pyramid doesn't belong to anyone, just like the other sacred symbols, circles, square. What culture? Where did it come from? You know, these are all universal. At one point, you know, people all over the world sense the energy, the power that emanates from this form and so they make their houses like this. Uh, the Linglingu, the pendant, is also an important heirloom. Spent time with uh, an artisan from the Ifugao, Aizam, because he's, uh, he's continuing the legacy of his grandfather as a Linglingu maker. Nagmula yung linggo sa Neolithic time mm -hmm. na 2,000 years, years old symbol talaga. Doon, doon sa nakita sa, ano doon sa Manunggul Jar, mm -hmm. meron yung jade na iring na linglingo. Mm -hmm. uh, sa ngayon, yung ibang anthropologists sinasabi nilang uh, linglingo is a 2,000 years symbol ng Pilipinas. Parehas sa Manunggul Jar. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, dalawa yung lolo ko na nanggugugwa ng ganyan. Pero noong 1940s, nito ng Amerikano tapos pag uh, di, di sila nakarating ng Maynila na bomba na. Kaya nawala sa pamilya namin yung paggawa. Mm. Being in his workshop and hearing it from his words what Linglingo is, I feel like it's really really great information. Mostly kasi no, noon ginamit na anting-anting ng nung unang panahon, ginamit talaga na anting-anting. Mm. Yung iba, sinasabi nilang fertility. Kasi noong unang panahon din, nung talagang hindi manganak, uh, uh, pinahihiri namin nila yung lingin ko. Tapos, yun na. Kasi, ito kasi yung symbol na to, is yung ganyan, is a fetus. Mm -hmm. Bakit pinapatuloy mo pa yung tradisyon na gano'n? Siguro number one is culture. Nawawala yung culture namin. Siguro sa pagkagawa ko ng ganito, uh, dito na mabubuhay yung pagka-Ifugao ko. It doesn't stop just with the Ifugao people. Linglingo symbolism is really powerful. Ito galing Indonesia. Ito pang linglingo So to galing Indonesia, Kalimantan. It's really amazing. And using the Linglingo as like this talisman, agimat, you know, to help us, like that's like embedded in the Filipino culture. There was a sacred space created for folks to meditate and pray. 
it was a lingolingo stone and earth structure where you can enter in like a womb. We brought in some seeds, some grain of rice, and we planted inside that womb our prayers and intentions that we wanted to birth. And the bulul. The bulul is uh, very much uh, related to rice production because it's supposed to be a rice garden. What I feel from the bulul is a symbol of our Anitu. It's an entity where the spirit of our ancestors or the creator can go to, to remind us that they are there to protect us. The bulul helped instill in me a sense of reassurance and comfort that no matter what I was working through, I felt supported and I felt I was being watched over. The way the pose, I feel like it's really humbling. Just kind of watching, watching over things, watching over you, the nature, and the squatting seated position with knees bent, arms crossed, in a, in a very unassuming position to me, very observant and very calm, very peaceful. I saw a vision of the bulol welcoming me. The bulol said, oh, a drink from the water because this is the way we, we welcome people. So if I drink the water, I'm also accepting their friendship.
just embraced and hugged by nature in all its glory and just could feel the love coming from the rice terraces and I can feel the love of labor. The Banaoi rice terraces, it's a sacred ancestral land that has been preserved. It taught me a lot uh, just to be present with, with nature and the spirits of the land, to be attentive, because it's all there, right? The veil was very thin in terms of knowing the essence of the spirits there that were alive. And they were with them constantly, surrounding them, breathing them, being one with them. It was just beautiful to witness that, and that's something I can incorporate in my own life. Going up each step, or making their food, or starting their fire. They call upon their spirits first to help guide them. It's almost like they ask for permission before we t they take any action, out of respect for the land. People that are so close to nature and how they connect with it and everything that they do. people work with the land in the Philippines. They led very simple lives. And it shows you don't need a lot of material things to be happy, since Mother Earth provides in multitude. So we are at the camp that I am creating here in our ancestral forest. This place is called Buludna, but I'm thinking of naming this camp uh, All Souls Go to Heaven. Uh, the name seems to resonate with me because of what I'm trying to promote. I'm trying to promote oneness. Hut that I'm building here, the shelter, is in the form of uh, a pyramid, like the roof of uh, the Ifugao hut. Children, if you see them, you know, they, they make art, some make circles. They don't have any clue about culture. They don't know that they belong to a certain culture, yet they make a circle. So that's the uh, goal, you know, going back to that origin of humanity where there is no barrier and we can only do that when we think and see things in the eyes of that inner child that is within all of us yeah so if i'm doing something that's not ifugao i don't think it's a cultural misappropriation sometimes i do things without understanding and I believe that they are spirit-led. And they let, later on my intellect will come and it will understand. So when it, we talk about spirituality, they are all friends. There is no cultural barriers, there is no time or uh, geographical uh, uh, location uh, related to them. So I hope to start with myself you know using these uh, shelters that I built uh, designed with a sacred geometry I like to uh, create inner peace and destroy the barriers that I have created that separated me from other people from other living beings including the stars and I hope that those who will come here will also connect with the power of the sacred geometry and do the same. You know, I will not force anyone to, to come and I will not force anyone to change. And if they do change, they should change for themselves, not for other people. Change for yourself. And from there, you know, you will positively affect the people who are close to you.
Mumbaki Pugong is uh, my uh, companion who helped me build the pyramid shelter. He was born in Bainan, uh, Kinakin, Banawi. I'm a farmer and I was initiated as, as a Mumbaki when I was 15 years old. Mm. I asked him uh, what he thinks about the change that I am uh, injecting. Is he going to be angry and is it uh, bad? And he actually said it, it's good. If it will strengthen, if it will give it more power, then it, it is good. Mm -hmm. So I explained to Pogong that one of the reasons why we are making changes is that we need to adapt with the changing environment. Uh, the young generation of today are looking for change to what became the norms now. And if we don't change our ways and it doesn't resonate with them, then they will not follow. So long as it will not weaken the Baki, our belief system, instead it will enhance them. Yeah, and so long as it will promote oneness in the world. Pukong said when I asked him what he think about uh, Ifugaos who went outside uh, our province, even those Ifugaos who are here, but they turn into other belief system like Christianity. What does he think about them? They also demonize or they uh, don't like our belief system anymore. And he said, we need to respect them. Yeah, let them uh, do what uh, they like, but we should not follow it. Yeah, if if it will uh, destroy our culture, we will let them be, but we will not follow them. Uh, and uh, we also should not demonize them because. Uh, Maknoan or the Supreme God will not like it. In other words, we will not return the bad thought that uh, they directed to us. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So I'm grateful to have him, and uh, because he's uh, he was initiated as a Mumbaki first, I have a lot to learn from him. Yeah, and I'm glad that he's not selfish to, to share. Now the things that I, I did not learn from my father, I will learn from him. The solo journey was uh, about ourselves. Just really sitting with ourselves and opening ourselves to the land and seeing what messages would come, what visions would come to fast from talking, from food, from technology, electricity. It was a reset in our brain, in our consciousness, in our well-being, physically, mentally, spiritually. Being able to build a relationship with the spirit so that we are allowed to, to be there and do the internal work that we needed to do. During their vision quest, the Mumbakis were praying and chanting and calling in our ancestors all throughout the two days that we had fasted. We're all here together to heal our connection to spirit, our connection with ourselves, our connection to Mother Earth. For some reason, I just felt whatever wanted to come through came through I've seen up in the mountains how easy it is for us to communicate with animals, with insects, with nature. Definitely I felt a strong confirmation that my ancestors were there. When I looked at the land, I saw that there wasn't really any visible flowers that I could see. I noticed that there were moments when I would smell these really strong 
fragrant flowers. And I felt like I've smelt that before in, in different periods of my life where it was just kind of random. And that for me is definitely a symbol that my ancestors were there. I wasn't sure what to expect, what kind of vision I was going to get. But my visions mostly came in a dream form. I don't usually remember my dreams, but the first night after fasting the whole day, I had multiple dreams that I had actually remembered and was able to write down. What I learned is that I am on the right path to deepening my inner wisdom beyond the conditioning I had been raised with. And the gongs are there to help guide me. We've forgotten the love of abundance of our ancestors and the abundance of what's right in front of us at our fingertips is the medicine of the land. The vision that I had was that healing is also powerful when it's done in community. During the vision quest, I realized that our ancestors come to us in several entities. I saw them in my dreams. They also visited me in many forms through insects or birds. The first morning I woke up in Mount Buludna, I saw a bird flying in circle above the mountain and it's singing. It was a very good omen. Later on, I found out that the bird was a Haribon the great Philippine eagle. I made several offerings to the land and its spirits as a gesture of respect and gratitude so that we could be welcomed in hopes of receiving new lessons and insights. Mamerto was simply cutting those walls of culture and identity and breaking through, really weaving in other practices from different lineages um, because he, he sees and, and I see how culture can also be a wall. It goes deeper than that. So this journey has definitely led me and confirmed how it's vital to go deep, but also deep in the roots and expand to see the connection between other cultures and that we are all, that we're all one. That's the, the affirmation that I got. He just guided us to be in tune that our instincts of seeing the connections is, is true. Help build that bridge for people to be like, yes, we can heal, we could help each other. There are different possibilities if we allow ourselves to be a healer. I wasn't very religious, but I did feel an energetic connection to the trees, the mountains, the oceans, and the animals. That to me was my church because it felt infinite and boundless and all-encompassing. This trip helped build a bridge to my own spiritual self after discovering that the animistic ways has been an ancient practice that I've innately been doing all along.
I just let my Diwata speak. I just see it as revealing the connection that already exists. Just being here in the Philippines, like, just helped me realize that um, I'm kind of building a bridge within myself. And when I'm like whole and feel that I'm taking this land with me wherever I go, then that makes the connections stronger. The connections that I make with with the Filipinos here, with Filipinos in the diaspora, but also just like with just us as as a people. For me, from my understanding and from what I got is, it's important to have your own cultural identity, but don't just limit it there. You know, find the thread of connection that you have to that other person and help people to really question themselves. What is my identity? And so, you know, culture is important. It's, you know, it helps us ground, but also we need new eyes outside. This is a new level of understanding and building and connecting, whether it's here in the Philippines or, you know, in the diaspora and connecting back. Everyone has a role. We've come to a turning point. We've really been able to communicate and and access knowledge like never before. We can really come together and support each other but still be be our individual selves. And we can really start to find peace, unity, build something that can connect us so that we can walk over the divide to each other and come back and forth and just move freely. Then we can really start to find the solutions to all the disconnect. It's really an amazing experience too, to like connect with each other, to not assume where everyone is at. I feel like as a human being, it's important to build bridges with one another so we can all connect with each other at face value. Respect. We are the leaders of the future. I caught on video. Matro, left side. Thank you very much for your visit. Journey to Now you'll go back to your communities to share. Thank you. Participating in the healing of our land. We're opening a space for you to come and find what you're searching for. There's power in the rice field here. Maybe just to build a bridge, so we invite you.
one week or two is not enough to fully understand or comprehend an experience that you can only have by being here. Our journey had us asking more questions about ourselves. The journey started with a curiosity. The curiosity to discover parts of my indigenous self that was shunned and hidden. We are now back in Los Angeles, still learning trial and error. To integrate our lessons and experiences back into our daily living in our local communities. Being the distant diaspora living far from the motherland it feels like the journey to Ifugao is a dream. For a long time, indigenous people, practices and traditions were just dismissed, made fun of as savages and backwards. How have we become so disconnected and separated? How do we find compassion to truly see all beings as a part of ourselves? How can we re-establish our connection so that we may uplift each other and build a bridge? Understanding ourselves as uprooted from the motherland, we believe we can have a deeper connection to others who are also in the diaspora. When we heal ourselves, the stronger we can understand and connect with each other. We are inspired to support each other in our crafts and in our work. Although we are all from different regions in the Philippines, this is our new tribe, our kapwa. Seeing ourselves in each other being one in community, togetherness, our family. Let's create more reasons to come back to our motherland and learn from our indigenous community. This was a story about five dreamers that had an opportunity to go back to their motherland. To connect with their roots and discover their ancestors. If you had the chance to walk this path, what, what would, would you, you discover? discover? Who, Who are, are you? Where, Where did you come, come from? from? What, what was, was it like where you came, came from? from?